Malaria is a serious and sometimes fatal disease that affects millions of people worldwide every year. It is caused by the Plasmodium parasite, which has several species, with Plasmodium falciparum being the most deadly. This parasite spreads through the bites of infected Anopheles mosquitoes, which are the primary vectors of malaria. When an infected mosquito bites a human, the parasites enter the bloodstream and travel to the liver, where they multiply rapidly. After multiplying in the liver, they re-enter the bloodstream and infect red blood cells, causing them to burst and release more parasites. This cycle of infection and destruction of red blood cells leads to the characteristic symptoms of malaria, such as high fever, chills, and severe sweating. Malaria is most common in tropical and subtropical regions, where the warm and humid climate provides an ideal environment for mosquitoes to thrive. These areas often have stagnant water sources, which are perfect breeding grounds for Anopheles mosquitoes, making it difficult to control their population. The World Health Organization estimates that nearly half of the world's population is at risk of contracting malaria, with over 200 million cases reported annually. The burden of malaria falls disproportionately on poor countries, especially in sub-Saharan Africa, where healthcare resources are limited. Limited access to healthcare and effective control measures makes prevention and treatment of malaria particularly challenging in these regions. Effective malaria control requires a combination of strategies, including vector control through insecticide-treated nets and indoor spraying, prompt diagnosis, and appropriate treatment with anti-malarial medications. Global efforts and international collaboration are essential to reduce the impact of malaria and move towards its eventual eradication. Continued investment in research and innovation, such as the development of new vaccines and treatments, is crucial for making significant progress in the fight against malaria. Malaria symptoms typically appear 10 to 15 days after an infected mosquito bite. This incubation period can vary depending on the specific type of malaria parasite. Classic symptoms include fever, chills, and sweating, often occurring in cycles. These cycles can be quite predictable with fever spikes happening every two to three days. These cycles are due to the parasite's life cycle within red blood cells. The parasites multiply inside the cells, causing them to burst and release more parasites into the bloodstream. Other symptoms can include headache, muscle aches, fatigue, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. These symptoms can often be mistaken for other illnesses, making diagnosis challenging. If left untreated, malaria can progress to severe illness with complications like anemia and cerebral malaria. Severe cases can lead to organ failure and even death. Not everyone infected will develop symptoms, some may have asymptomatic malaria. These individuals can carry the parasite without feeling ill. Asymptomatic carriers can still transmit the parasite to mosquitoes. This makes controlling the spread of malaria more difficult. Early diagnosis is crucial for timely treatment and preventing severe complications. Rapid diagnostic tests and blood smears are commonly used to detect malaria. Seek medical attention if you suspect malaria. Early intervention can save lives and prevent the disease from spreading. Prompt treatment improves outcomes and reduces transmission. Anti-malarial medications are effective when administered early. Malaria can lead to life-threatening complications, making it one of the most dangerous infectious diseases in the world. Severe malaria requires immediate treatment to prevent fatal outcomes and reduce the risk of long-term health issues. Anemia, caused by the destruction of red blood cells, is a common complication that can severely weaken the body. This leads to fatigue, weakness, and shortness of breath, making everyday activities difficult and exhausting. Respiratory distress can occur due to fluid buildup in the lungs or severe anemia, requiring urgent medical intervention. Cerebral malaria affects the brain, causing seizures, coma, and even death if not treated promptly. Other complications include kidney and liver failure, which can further complicate the patient's condition. Pregnant women are especially vulnerable, risking miscarriage, low birth weight, and severe maternal illness. Prompt diagnosis and treatment are essential to prevent severe complications and improve patient outcomes. Effective management, including medication and supportive care, significantly improves chances of recovery. Awareness and education are key to reducing malaria's impact, especially in high-risk areas. Supportive care, including intravenous therapy and monitoring, is often needed for severe cases to stabilize the patient. Prompt diagnosis is crucial for effective malaria treatment. Laboratory testing detects the parasite in the blood. Microscopic examination of blood smears is a common method. 
rapid diagnostic tests RDTs, detect specific proteins produced by the parasite. RDTs provide quick results useful in remote areas. Additional tests may determine the specific plasmodium species. Molecular tests like PCR offer sensitive and specific results. Early diagnosis and prompt treatment improve outcomes. Seek medical attention if malaria is suspected. Accurate diagnosis guides appropriate treatment. Effective diagnosis is key to controlling malaria. Treatment depends on infection severity and plasmodium species. Early diagnosis and prompt treatment prevent complications. Uncomplicated malaria is treated with anti-malarial medications. Artemisinin-based combination therapies ACTs, are highly effective. Severe malaria requires immediate intravenous treatment. Intravenous artesanate rapidly reduces parasite levels. Supportive care like blood transfusions may be needed. Complete the full course of treatment to prevent drug resistance. Follow healthcare professionals' instructions for best outcomes. Effective treatment reduces malaria morbidity and mortality. Awareness and education improve treatment adherence. Continued research is vital for developing new treatments. Prevention is key to reducing malaria's burden. A combination of measures significantly reduces infection risk. Vector control targets different stages of malaria transmission. Insecticide-treated bed nets ITNs, prevent mosquito bites while sleeping. Long-lasting insecticidal nets LLNs, maintain effectiveness for years. Indoor residual spraying IRS, kills mosquitoes resting on treated surfaces. Reducing mosquito breeding sites is crucial. Eliminate standing water around homes and communities. Community engagement and education are essential. Awareness empowers individuals to protect themselves. Effective prevention requires coordinated efforts. Continued investment in prevention strategies is vital. Malaria disproportionately affects tropical and subtropical regions. Nearly half of the world's population is at risk. Sub-Saharan Africa bears the highest burden. Warm, humid climates provide ideal mosquito breeding conditions. Poverty and limited healthcare access increase vulnerability. Children under 5 and pregnant women are particularly at risk. Travelers to endemic areas should take preventive measures. Consult healthcare professionals before traveling. Understanding malaria's epidemiology guides control strategies. Effective control reduces malaria's global impact. Continued research and investment are essential. Significant progress has been made in malaria control. Improved prevention and treatment have reduced cases and deaths. Drug and insecticide resistance pose ongoing challenges. New anti-malarial drugs and strategies are crucial. The RTSS vaccine offers partial protection for children. Ongoing research aims to develop more effective vaccines. Genetic research explores modifying mosquitoes to reduce transmission. Ethical and ecological considerations must be addressed. Continued innovation and investment are vital. Collaboration accelerates progress towards malaria eradication. Global efforts are essential for sustained success. Malaria heavily impacts low-income countries. The burden extends beyond healthcare costs to lost productivity and economic growth. Malaria traps poor populations in a cycle of poverty. Sickness prevents work and education, reducing opportunities. Families incur substantial expenses for treatment and lost wages. National economies suffer from reduced investment and tourism. Addressing malaria is an investment in economic development. Improved health outcomes lead to increased productivity. Breaking the cycle requires a multi-sectoral approach. Health and socioeconomic factors must be addressed together. Effective malaria control requires a comprehensive approach. Integrated Vector Management IVM, combines various control measures. ITNs, IRS, and larviciding reduce mosquito populations. Access to diagnosis and treatment is essential. Public health programs ensure availability of diagnostic tests and medications. Community engagement and education are critical. Awareness empowers communities to protect themselves. Surveillance systems monitor trends and drug resistance. Adapt control strategies based on surveillance data. Sustained efforts are crucial for long-term success. The global fight against malaria has made progress, but challenges remain. Continued innovation, investment, and collaboration are needed. Research and development are crucial for new tools and strategies. Strengthening healthcare systems ensures access to prevention and treatment. Addressing social determinants reduces vulnerability. 
investing in social protection programs improves living conditions. International collaboration shares knowledge and resources. Working together accelerates progress towards eradication. A world free from malaria is achievable with sustained effort.